So um, some gamers also tend to go for linear switches. Hey everyone, it's Melissa and we're back for another episode of Hardware Zones Tech Me Up. If you've been on the social media landscape recently, you might have noticed a slight increase in the interest in mechanical keyboards. By slight, we mean it's an all-out fad. So with everyone having one, I want one too. If you've been trying to get into this, it may be a little daunting just trying to figure out all the things you need to know. What are the components you need and where do you buy them? So we've brought in some help to figure it out. Here are tips on how to build your first mechanical keyboard. Okay, if I'm being completely honest here, I am an absolute newbie when it comes to building custom keyboards. So I brought the right person here today. Hey Vera! Hi guys, hi Melissa. Okay, I know that you are an absolute whiz when it comes to building these things. So how do you start? So I started um, Kips and Cords a year ago. What made me start this side hustle was I had a knack for building and assembling things. So I think I felt like many others, I fell into the rabbit hole on YouTube where I watched a lot of um, big YouTubers like Teha types or that assemble keyboards from scratch. Yeah, so I was like, oh my god, I have to do it. Okay, so Vera, I see a bunch of different parts here on the table and I assume there are different parts of a custom keyboard. So for a total beginner here, what, what do I need to know before I begin? A basic um, complete keyboard requires the switches, the base and also the keycaps. You can find them on Shopee or some local um, sellers that have it, they are like Mecca, Mesh, Ilum KB. Okay, it sounds incredibly democratized and it's quite easy to get these parts. Oh, they look like Lego. <laughs> yes, in fact, when, I, when I'm when i assembling keyboard or when I explain it to newbies, I just say, think of it like building Legos. Oh, I understand yeah. that. This one looks a lot smaller than like the ones that I usually see over there. Like they don't have, they're missing certain functions, are right. they? Right, yeah. Um, a lot of people prefer this because it's very compact and compact also means that it's easy to carry around, especially for those who like to work in the office or like to travel from place to place and yeah. So it's very lightweight. This layout is called the 65% layout. On average, it has like 68 keys or switches. Oh, um, so this is 65% of a regular keyboard. Yes, you can think of it that way. So a regular uh -huh. keyboard is considered a 100% keyboard because it has everything, it's full. Oh. Yeah. oh my god, I'm learning so much. I love how she can just like eyeball it and like that's that, that's that, that's that. Nice. Yeah. So my impression of a custom built keyboard is when I hear my brother use one and it's like really loud. Do all of them sound that way? Okay, so from what I can deduce, right, the one your brother is using, it's the switches that he's using are called clicky switch. So from the name implies, it creates a lot of sound, like clicky, high pitch sound. Who goes for those switches are usually um, gamers. So I don't know why gamer has this um, preconceived notion that the louder noise you make, the better you are, something like that. <laughs> yeah, but for us um, students or office workers or people who live with their parents at home, we prefer um, quieter switches. So if you want something quieter, an alternative would be tactile switches. It also retains the bump, just that it doesn't have the clicky sound anymore. It sounds a little bit more quieter. Okay, I think I'm more of a linear girl because mm. I do want a quiet feeling. So yeah. when we get these switches, do they like fit just everywhere any, any, on any keyboard? Okay, that's a very good question. Some keyboards, usually the older models, right? They only support three pins. These three pins, they are good in a sense because they can fit into um, the newer model and older, older models. Okay, so how do I make sure that I get the right ones for the one that I want? You have to do a little bit of research, but to be honest, even if you get five pins on a three pin keyboard, right, you can just cut. Oh, yeah. okay. So the legs are plastic, so you can just cut it off easily. Yeah, so what we have here, these are linear switches. Um, Gatheron rates to be exact. So they are called linear because they do not retain the tactile bumps anymore. And they are way quiet. When you press it down, there's no bumpy feeling, there's no sound. Even off-the-shelf keyboards, they also um, come with different switches. Some gamers also tend to go for linear switches because uh, without the bump, right, in a sense, when you press, it responds faster. And we have a technical jargon for that. It's called the actuation force. Actuation force. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like badass. So in layman's terms, it basically means the amount of force required to push the switch down. So if you require more strength to use the keyboard, does that mean it 
like ties your fingers out faster. Yes and no. If you are someone who uses um switches with lighter actuation force and you suddenly switch to something like 80, 90 grams, right? Yes, it'll tire you up. Especially if you work long hours. But for me, I think I got strong fingers. <laughs> yep. Just, just her casually bragging about her strong fingers. <laughs> okay, we have the base, we have the switches, and we're missing the keycaps. Ding, ding, ding. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yep. look, this one has Japanese symbols on it. Yep, so this, the brand and the profile, everything, they are OEM. Okay, so that means they are not branded. Like, are there specific brands that are popular in the market? Yes, and they can cost up to a few hundred dollars. Uh, These keycaps, they are mostly for aesthetic, though they do serve a purpose when it comes to typing also. Okay, but do they have like different experiences based on like the kind of keycaps they use? Yes, the keycaps not only affects the typing experience, it also affects the sound produced when you're typing. So, okay, okay, okay. are we ready to build a keyboard now, Mel? Yeah, yeah, I want to. Okay. Okay, I want to... I'm going to build a keyboard by myself mm -hmm. now, I suppose. Yeah. It looks very plug, plug and play, so... Um, I'm just going to start plugging. Okay. okay. If you tell... If I'm doing it wrong, tell me. <laughs> I, is this in already? Nope, you have to hear a tuck sound. There we go. Oh, okay, okay. So, it, it's... Just don't force it in, don't break anything. It, like, how do you take it out? Alright, we have this a switch puller. I didn't even notice this was here. Okay, yeah. oh, so really you to, show me. Okay, so you have to make sure it aligns with the north and south part of the switch. You have to like dig it in and pull it out. Huh? Yeah. Nice. And right now we're just assembling it. Usually, before assembling, we have to mod each individual switch. When I say modding, we are actually referring to like lubing each component. That sounds like a lot of work for each individual. Yeah, oh. right. So for a 100% keyboard, I think I usually spend about a good 2-3 hours. Maybe. And then um, I didn't talk about these stabilizers at first. You can also mod them. So yeah, now you can't hear the sounds. Only when you put the keycaps, then you can hear how an unmodded stabilizer sounds from a modded one. What is the care like? Do you have to continuously loop them up, open them up? As long as you use the keyboard regularly, I don't think you ever have to loop it huh. ever again. Unless you're planning to use the keyboard for 10 years down the road. We did it! No, 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 not yet. Not yet. Almost done. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, they still make it, so mm -hmm. what do we do next? Okay, we gotta, to make it less naked, we gotta put on these keycaps. I mean, if you don't put on the keycaps, then you have a very awkward time typing. Oh my god, I feel like I'm solving a puzzle or some type, even though <laughs> the little pieces are literally here. Yep. Oh my god, this turned out like so much better than I thought it would. It's so satisfying actually. So I like this minimalistic look, but if I want to kind of switch out the keycaps yeah. into like the nicer ones, prettier ones like the yeah. ones at the yeah. back, or like specific, you know, more specific customizations of the different parts, like what do I do? Do I just like hit up the stores that you talked about? Yep, and then if you're feeling confident enough, you could switch out the parts on your own. Yeah. I am feeling confident. <laughs> Thanks to you, I managed to put this together and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Um, but I'm sure this is just like the beginning. Like mm -hmm. what other fancy things I can do or what are other resources that I can look out for? Okay, so um, as mentioned earlier, you can reach out to the local um, sellers, right? To get like, let's say fancier keycaps, like the ones, the one at the back. And let's say you don't like this switch one to go for something like heavier or something a little more noisier, you can also contact them to change the switches. And what else? Like, uh, what would someone that is, you know, diving deeper into this journey of custom building keyboards, what would they be looking at next? I didn't mention it earlier, but from the name of the company that started, right? Keeps and Cords. So keyboard is just one component. We also customize coiled cables. I do, have you seen one before? No! Okay, so think of it, you know, last time the old telephone, right? Your house phone, got the coiled cable. Yeah, that's how it looks like. And then you can plug into the keyboard and then plug into your mm -hmm. PC. So it looks more aesthetic in a sense. Okay, but that one is just like a USB-C. Yes, most keyboards now they are running on USB-C. The older ones are micro USB. Yeah, micro USB. Other than the different profiles, keycaps also 
they are made in different materials. There's two different kind of materials. One is called ABS, ABS plastic, and also another is PBD. That's more premium and I guess longer lasting. When, like, if I think about my brother's keyboards mm -hmm. and some of them are get really fancy and they have like lights coming out oh, yeah. and all these things coming out, can you do that as well? Yes, um, not me, but more of the manufacturer. So some, this uh, keycap, this sort of keycap we have here is like opaque. So you see like opaque because um, the legends, they are printed on it. For this Razer keyboard, it's the legends, they are called shine through. So it means the RGB from the emitting from the PCB, right, can shine through the keycap. So it, it feels more vibrant and brighter. But this nonetheless, it will, it will still, you can still see the RGB, just that's not very prominent and bright. It sounds like we barely scratch the surface of this. Like, what about if we didn't want to build one from scratch? Okay, so if building a keyboard from scratch sounds very daunting to you, personally, I would recommend um, going for off-the-shelf keyboards. There's no shame in that, like, to be honest. Some of the brands you can look out for are like Logitech, Razer, Techwear. So um, these off-the-shelf, some of them, they are not customizable. So if you want a customizable off-the-shelf keyboard, right, meaning in the future you intend to change certain parts, you have to make sure that they are hot swappable. You can also um, customize a solderable off-the-shelf keyboard, but it's very, very troublesome. That is a whole other world, but at least I know that we have different options. Mm -hmm. Whether we want to go all from scratch, yeah. whether we want just want to sub out a couple mm -hmm. of things with uh, pre-built ones already. Um, thank you so much, Vera, for sharing all of this insight for us. Um, it's very informative to me, and I really do feel like I can dive into this feeling a little safer and feel safe in playing uh, with this as well. Mm -hmm. So now that I've built this, I'm going to bring it home okay. and try it. Safe to say, working from a keyboard that you hand-built yourself really makes you appreciate your setup. And if this rabbit hole was too deep for you, not to worry, you can always check out pre-built mechanical keyboards. You might lose some customizability options, but hey, a lot of mechanical keyboards also have the stems that can support custom keycaps, so that's always that. And if you'd like to read more about mechanical keyboards, do check out Hardware Zone's coverage on the link in the description below. As always, remember to like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.